Let's say something happens during the installation of Docker Desktop and you need to fix it, but you don't know how. Or maybe you wanted to uninstall Docker Desktop and then something went wrong, so later Docker Desktop used some old files. If it happens, it is good to know what you need to remove in order to completely uninstall Docker Desktop and later you can install it again. But the problem is every environment is different, so I can't give you one script that can work for everyone, everywhere. Instead of that, I will show you how you can figure it out, what you need to remove on your machine. This is how my Docker desktop looks like. And as you can see, I have some Docker extensions on the left side. And now we can go to our browser and search for how we can uninstall Docker desktop. And I will use the search term Docker desktop for Mac uninstall and the first result is the official documentation and you can see here we have two options we can use the graphical interface or we can copy a command out and this is what I want to try first I try to copy it again and now I can go to my terminal and run this command if I run this command then it looks like it doesn't try to uninstall Docker Desktop, it just opens the dashboard again, so I need to use the other option using the graphical interface. Now I can go to the corner here, and on the top of, on the, top of the screen I can click on this wheel icon, and there I can go to troubleshoot, or the other solution, I can go to the other icon, this bug icon, which is actually the troubleshoot again. So I can click on this button, this icon, and now you can see multiple buttons and you can also see red buttons. And usually you don't want to click on red buttons, but in this case you want to. If you want to remove all your data, then you can click on the clean purge data button. Or if you want to reset your configuration as well, then you can click on the reset to factory default button. It will also remove all your data, of course. Or you can click on the uninstall button, which will mean you will uninstall Docker Desktop completely. And actually the difference between the two buttons, the uninstall and the reset to factory default button, as far as I know, is that the reset to factory default button will remove everything, reset everything to the factory default, and then restart Docker Desktop. On the other hand, the uninstall button will just remove everything and leave Docker uninstalled. So let's click on this uninstall button. And after that, I need to confirm that I want to uninstall Docker desktop. And now I need to wait for some seconds. Okay, now we have finally uninstalled Docker desktop. Let's go back to my terminal because I want to confirm that I have successfully uninstalled Docker Desktop. I don't want to see any processes and files left behind by Docker. So as a first step, I want to search for my processes and in the list of my processes, I will search for Docker. So if I want to list my processes and also search for Docker, I can use a PS command. So let's use PS AUX and also the grab command. And now you can see three processes on the screen, but we actually have just two because the other process, the first process is the process of grep itself. Now, the first process I want to deal with is the last process on the screen, which is the com.docker.vmnetd. And because I don't know what this process is, I want to copy it out and search for it. And now let's go back to my browser and search for this process name. Let's go back to Google and I will use this term between quotes. And now I have many results here and probably I could find a solution using one of these results, but I want to find something from the official documentation. So now I will try to remove the full path and only keep the file name. And then I tried that. And now you can see that I have found something from the official documentation. And this documentation will explain that this process is actually just a helper process. So I can probably safely remove it, safely kill it. 
Now I will go back to my terminal and try to kill that process. But before I kill it, I want to see if the file that started this process is still there on my file system, so I will use the ls command to see that. And now you can see that this process is not there on my file system, so I can safely kill it, and this is what I will do. I need to use sudo sudo kill-9 to kill it immediately and the process id. And then I need to use my password, and here if I kill it, now I want to see the process list again, and now I have only one process, the process of the Docker extension. And the solution will be very similar, so I want to copy the full path and search for that file on the file system. And the result is similar, so it means I can safely remove this process too. And now I want to use sudo kill-9 to kill it immediately again, and the process ID. Now we can check it again. If we manage to kill this process, yes, we did that. So now we can finally start to search for files on our file system which was left behind by Docker. At this point of the video, I forgot to mention that you need to remove the Docker application from the applications folder. So you can do it by running the following command, or you can use your finder. Let's go to finder and here you need to search for Docker. And now you need to make sure that you filter to the applications folder and here click on the Docker application icon and then move to bin. Now, I want to go back to my terminal, and here I want to run this command. It will ask for my password. I deleted the Docker application. And now, enjoy the rest of the video. And the first folder I know that Docker used is the .docker folder in my home, so I can try to remove that. This is just the Docker configuration, the Docker client configuration folder. And the other is very similar. If you used Kubernetes, then you can have the .cube folder as well. I remove this. And now there is another folder as well, and this is the getting started folder, which can be there if you started the getting started guide when you first started Docker Desktop, or you could choose it later too. Now, because I don't know if this getting started folder is that folder, created by Docker. Before I remove this, I want to see the content of this folder. Let's use ls to see the list of files inside the getting started folder. And it looks like it is related to Docker, but I'm not sure that this was created by Docker because maybe I have created this folder and used some Docker file and Docker Compose file and YAML files. So let's see the readme. getting started, readme md, and if I scroll up, it looks like this is actually something that was created by Docker Desktop, because this is the Docker getting started tutorial. So I want to remove it. Another problem is that there are some folders I don't know about. I don't know where actually Docker Desktop create files, so I need to find them. And to find them, I can use the find command, and I will copy one command. Now, I don't want to run this command because I know I have so many files in my home folder that it wouldn't help me to see all of them. So I will not use this, but now I need to find another solution. And the part of the solution is to search for files in my home. I mean, a list files in my home. So let's do that. If I scroll up, this starts from the beginning. Then you can see folders starting with dot. And one of those folders is actually the dot 
cache folder. This is here. And the other is the .config folder. And if I scroll down more, I can find the folder like .jfrog, which is a Docker extension. And it has actually two folders. One is jfrog and the other is jfrog docker desktop extension. But then I want to scroll down more so I can find other folders that could be used by Docker. And one of those folders are the applications folder here, applications or the library folder. And now I can start with removing folders that I know I can remove. And one of those folders is the .jfrog folder which is the folder of the jfrog docker extension. So let's remove that .jfrog. And after that, I can continue with the jfrog docker desktop extension. And now I need to find folders, files inside the application, the cache, the config, and the library folder. Let's start with the first, which was the cache folder. I copy the commands into the terminal. Now I can't find anything in this folder, but the fact that I cannot find anything here doesn't mean that you will not find anything because maybe I just didn't use some Docker extensions or didn't try some configurations that would result some files here in this folder. So now let's go to the next folder, which is the applications folder. And here you can see that there is Docker Community Forums, which is an application of Google Chrome. I want to keep it. So let's go to the other folder, the library folder. Now, if I run it, I have so many files on the screen that it will not help me. So now I need another solution to filter out some of the unnecessary files here. So let's use the search command again with less. Now I can find the irrelevant folders here. So as the first file here, first folder is Firefox. I don't want to remove anything in that folder. And there is the Google Chrome folder here down. And if I scroll down, there is the code folder and also the JetBrains folder. And I want to filter them out. So I will try to use another command. I copy it into the terminal. And now, as you can see, I will filter out the Python folder Firefox, the VS Code, Google, JetBrains, Mobile Document, and DaVinci, UTM app, and also Notion. Now I will try to run it. And the first couple of files were created by Visual Studio Code, so I don't want to remove them, but I want to remove everything else. And the first folder which I need I will copy it. Let's try this. And now we can check if we managed to remove that folder. Yes, but we have some other files as well. So let's remove the next. And the next. And now I want to check the list again. So I want to remove this from the HTTP storages folder, again between quotes, and then the other from the group containers folder. Now I can check it again. And I can't find anything else, so it means we have finally removed everything, every files, and killed 
all the processes left behind by Docker Desktop. So now the next step is that I will show you the script I have created so I can use that when I want to repeat these steps so I don't need to do it manually all the time. And this script is in my documents folder. Let's see that. And here in the script, you can see that it will start with killing processes. For example, that VMnet the process. And what you can't see here is the JPROC process, but I can add it later. And there is removing the Docker application and also the list of removable files from my home folder. And if I run this script, let's see what happens. It asks for my password again because I can't remove the application from the slash applications folder. And now you can see that it will show you what it attempted to do and what files it could find or what files it could not find. And at the end, this is the reminder to remove Docker desktop from the dock. So now I can go to the dock and click on the Docker icon. And now the question mark appears, which means it will not work. Now I can open the context menu and go to options and in the options, go to remove from doc. So this is how you can remove Docker desktop completely. You can use the graphical interface or the terminal, but the terminal version doesn't work. Until it is fixed, you need to use the graphical interface. And after that, you still need to remove some folders if you want to make sure that by the time you install it again, there will be no old folders. <laughs>